Wave your hands there. It's a new love. It's a new love. In my home. It's a new love. In my finances. It's a new love. It's a new love. It's a new love. In my job. It's a new love. There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land is green, a new grace has been released, the glory. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands. Here. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Abundance of evil. It's a new level. It's a new level. There's an overflow. Abundance of blessings. I'll take it over. I'll take it over. Somebody wave your hand. Over your family, over your education, over your finances. Come on. I see the nations come to me to receive answers from my knees. I shall shine as the house of the hill. My greatness cannot be seen. I see the nations come to me to receive answers. To receive answers from my lips. From my lips. I am shining. I am shining. House on the hill. House on the hill. My greatness. My greatness. Yeah. Begin by the It's we are. I want to speak to what the Lord is doing. My reality. Say it's my reality. My reality. It's me all my heart is dream. What the Lord is doing. My reality. There's an overflow, abundance of faith. It's a new level. It's a new level. It's a new level. It's a new level. There's an overflow, abundance of faith. Abundance of faith. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. Holy Ghost, I am favor. 
How many of you walking? Come on. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Lord. Do you know you are Once again, welcome to Fresh Fire Prayer Ministry, where we keep the fire of the Holy Spirit burning. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for yet another day. We thank Him for how far His brothers. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassion filleth not their new. Every morning, great is His faithfulness towards us. I want you to join me to go before God, to thank Him, to bless Him, to give Him all the glory. Let's thank him for the deliverance he gave us yesterday and the deliverance you are going to receive today through his word and through prayers. Let's begin to acknowledge him for how far he's brought us. It has been a very rough year, but the victory is sure because Jesus is with us. Let's thank him for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and taking us to November and December to finish this year. We want to glorify God for preserving us. We've learned that he is our rock, he is our fortress, he is our deliverer, he is our strength, he is our shield, he is the stronghold, our stronghold, he is our salvation, he is our refuge and our savior. He is everything, he is everything to us. Without him, we are nothing. He is our provider, he is our defender, he is our sustainer, he is our redeemer. In him we live, we breathe, we breathe and have our being. It is because of his grace and his mercies. That's why we are still alive. It, if it hadn't been for the Lord on our side, some of our enemies would have been, would have consumed us, destroyed us long time ago. But the Lord keeps on coming through to bring us deliverance. Thank him for the testimonies. Thank him for what he is yet about to do in your life because his promises are yea and amen. And let's thank him for his faithfulness. And as you praise God, even in advance for the things you're expecting, uh, you begin to see the manifestation of these things in Jesus' mighty name. So without much ado, I want you to go with me right now into the presence of God. 
and just begin to say, Father, I thank you. I love you. I worship you. I exalt you because you are good and your goodness and your mercies endure it forever and ever. So join me right now as we go before the presence of God to give him all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Lift up your voice right now, wherever you may be. And begin to say thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Thank God for life. Just thank God for your life. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your spouse. Thank God for the health. Thank God for grace. Thank God for the, His Son Jesus Christ. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that is our strength giver. Thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you that you are the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of man. Thank you for being our Redeemer. Thank you for being our salvation. Thank you, Lord, for being our rock. Thank you, Lord, for being our fortress. Thank you, Lord, for being our deliverer. Thank you, Lord, for being our shield. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you, Lord, for being the horn of our salvation. Thank you for being our stronghold. Thank you for being our savior. Thank you for being our refuge. Thank you for being our, our provider, our protector, our defender, our source and sustenance, our refuge, our security and safety. We bless you, Jesus Christ. We worship you, Jesus Christ. We magnify you, Jesus Christ. We adore you, Jesus Christ. We enthrone you, Jesus Christ. We join the seraphims and cherubims, the 24 elders in heaven, the angelic host, in saying that you are worthy, O oh God, to receive all power, all glory, all honor, all riches, all adoration, all honor belong to you, O God Almighty. You alone deserve, O Lord Almighty, to die, O Lord, to redeem us from our sins, O Lord. You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, O Lord. We bless you and we say you are great and greatly to be praised. There's no God like you. You are excellent. You are marvelous. You are you are glorious, you are powerful. There's no God like unto thee, O Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down the same, your name is to be praised. Your name is high above the earth and your glory is above the heavens. Who can be compared unto you, O Lord Almighty? We worship you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll make my boast in the name of the Lord my God. I'll praise the Lord. I'll bless the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I forget not his benefit. You are the lilies of the valleys, the rose of Sharon, the rock of ages, the ancient of days, the bright morning star, the sun coming king, the I am that I am, the all time finish of our salvation. In you we move, we breathe, and have our being. You are the reason for our existence. Without you, we are nothing, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a reliable God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a dependable God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a faithful God, for being our helper in times of need. Thank you that you are the bread we eat when we are hungry. You are the water we drink when we are thirsty. Without you, we are nothing, O oh Lord. In you, we move, we breathe, and have our being. You are the anchor to our life. You are the solid rock on whom we stand. We worship you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of health. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for daily provisions. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for daily protection and preservation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a, a friend who stays closer than a brother. We can always call upon you and you never disappoint. Thank you that your goodness and your mercy endure forever. They are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness towards us. If it had been for you, if it hadn't been for your mercies, some of us will not be alive. We would have been consumed, we would have been destroyed because of the plans of our enemies against us. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, that throughout all our challenges, you always come through for us. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Oh, come and let us adore him for his Christ, the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him for his Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. We thank you for being the way, the truth, and the life. No one has access to the Father except through you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you bestow upon us daily. Thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for the life you've given to us. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you for everything that you do for us on a daily basis. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Maka payada rapanda la babus ikanda la baba babas ikada da 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 rapa baba baba babas re baba baba babas ukabara bashindi ripanda veseke rebashanda. Thank you, Lord, that you are the author and finish of our salvation. Thank you that you are. 
the God who is our provider, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Your name is Jehovah Shammah. Thank you, Lord Almighty, that you are our Prince of Peace, Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah Adonai, you are our Lord and Master. Jehovah Shalom, peace. Oh, Chikenu. Oh, Lord, righteousness, we thank you, Lord Almighty. Rohi, our shepherd, we worship you, Jesus. Sabwas, we thank you, Lord, for you are the Lord of hosts. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, your mercies. We bless you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We cannot thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough. Everything that we are is because of you. We owe our very lives to you because the very breath that we have and man's life is so fragile that when God suspends your ability to breathe for just five minutes, you will die. If God is just to block you from breathing or to take the oxygen away from you, within five to 10 minutes, we will perish. So we are just like a balloon that needs air to survive. A balloon that is filled with air and that when that air is taken out of the balloon the balloon is useless because it's not inflated can you imagine you and i we are just like the balloon the only thing that is keeping us going and moving is because of the oxygen the air that is in us that gives us the ability to function take this oxygen out of your body just like the balloon and see where you will be. Where would your riches be? Where would your honor be, your glory be? Where would your breakthrough be? And it's the Lord who keeps us inflated with his oxygen, with his life. So we have to be thankful and grateful for the very existence, the very life that you have. It is by the grace of God. If God is to deflate, take out the oxygen out of you, you will drop dead and return to dust. You came out of dust and you will return back to dust. The only thing that is giving you beauty and honor and glory is because of the Spirit of God in you. So we just want to say, Father, thank you. Man, we are nothing. It is only God who makes us something. Man, we are nothing. So when you see people bluffing, remember that they came out of dust and dust they shall return. And therefore, we should not pride ourselves too much because the most important thing is to know God and to worship him because he is your creator. We worship you, Jesus. I want you to go with me and let's go before God and confess our sins. The Bible says, if we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. One of the things you will learn that can place a person in a spiritual bondage or spiritual imprisonment is sin and disobedience sin and disobedience that is the gateway into finding yourself into what being captured by demons or witches or wizards uh, uh, so whenever people or we are engaged or indulged in fornication adultery lying gossip making things idols in our lives and not having time for god we say we don't have time to pray. We don't have time to read the Bible, but we have time for basketball. We have time for soccer. We have time for every other thing, but we don't have time for God. We have made things our idols. Others to have been engaging in new age, yoga, crystal balls, science, and all sort of burning of candles or going to the psychic and all these things are you worshiping idols, demonic spirit that can come in and contaminate you, self-righteousness, you thinking you are righteous because you, of the way you live your life, not depending on the righteousness of God, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, lying, stealing, lust, all these things we do, and when we do that, we fall short of God's glory, it gives the demons, the witches, our enemies, the legal ground and right to be able to arrest our soul spiritually and cage it. We want to go before God right now that if there is any sin in our lives that has given the devil the legal grounds and the legal right access into our lives, we are asking for mercy and forgiveness. But the Bible says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us. The Bible 
says that a man's heart is desperately evil. Who can know it? So sometimes the things that you think about or you perceive in your heart against your brother or sister, you may be laughing with the person, but yet you are jealous. You are laughing with the person, yet yes, so you are envious. You are laughing with a brother or a sister, and yes, so you are gossiping be, uh, uh, about them behind their backs. You are laughing with them, but yes, so you are doing everything to undermine their progress. You are not happy about what God is doing in their lives. These are all sins that if we don't turn away from our sins, we will not see the glory of God. Sin causes us to fall short of the glory of God. And somebody, we are, we are involved in an ungodly relationship. We know very well that this person we are hanging around with, everything coming from their mouth is foul, does not glorify God, and you know you have no business with such a person. But because of desperation, you are keeping on hanging around this person, hoping you will change them because you just are desperate to get married. Or there's so much against you and you know you need time to spend with God. But yes, to your excuses, I don't have time. And yes, to you have time for every other thing except for God and to worship him with all your body, soul, and spirit. Some of us are not being faithful to our God. We told him we will do this and do that if he does this and this for us. You remember God was faithful. He did it for you. Ask yourself, have you fulfilled your part of the bargain? You have, you have not been faithful. You have not been serving him the way you should serve him. You have not been giving as you said you give. You have not been praying the way you said you pray. You have not been studying your word and obeying the word as you should. You have not disconnected yourself from some wrong relationships and you don't understand why you are still not manifesting God's blessing. Why? Because you have remained unfaithful. Unfaithful. Tonight, I want us to get it right with God so that before the end of this year, God's blessing will come to that today. Any demon or any witchcraft spirit or any unclean spirit that has kept, kept you in prison because of the confession of your sin, sometimes because of an ungodly relationship, especially many people have gotten into a lot of spiritual imprisonment because of ungodly relationship. You went to cheat on your wife and that Jezebelic Delilah woman has bound you and captured your soul. Imprisonment because of a soul tie that you had with an unbeliever. Today, that soul tie has what has given them the right to cage your soul. Some people, once you have a relationship with them, and you don't, it doesn't end in marriage. That is it. If they don't marry you, they will tell you no one else can marry you. So that is how some, de, uh, some men are very demonic. Once they enter into a relationship with you, have sex with you, once they don't end up marrying you, or later on you pull out because you saw their true colors, you can go away. But remember, because of that so tie you had with them, because you didn't marry them, they, they will vow an evil vow that if they can't marry you, no one else can marry you. And you realize that your soul has been caged with them, meaning part of your soul is with them and they block you and hinder you from ever getting into any other healthy relationship. And it's all beca because of a wrong soul tie with a wrong person because you had sex or became intimate with them and it has messed you up. Sometimes to some men's destiny has been imprisoned because of uh, ungodly marital infidelity, sleeping around with different strange women, and they don't know that they have been captured. They've been captured. Or a sin you committed. You went to a psychic. You went to a witch doctor. You went to a herbalist. Somebody told you to practice some satanic uh, ritual by giving you some candles, by giving you some uh, crystal balls, give give you give you some herb herbals. Some people give you herbals and they come in and say, burn this herbals and it's going to repel demonic presence or burn this insect or this candles and it's going to bring about some angelic or saints. Some of you even buy candles with saints on Saint Michael, Saint this, Saint this, Saint this, and you are burning it. What you don't know is that you are inviting. There is nothing like worshiping of angels. It, they are all demonic spirit, fallen angels from the second heavens. They give you a perfume and they tell you that before you can repel or invite the saint, burn this candle, burn this incense, use this Florida water, make this 
around them, burn this herbals, and then use this perfume and use this mixed oil with different colors and then do this. And you thought you were <laughs> calling an angel to come and help you. What you don't know is that you open a portal for demons to come into your life and begin to what? Imprison you from that time. Maybe you, you, may, you might have experienced a temporal breakthrough after that. And then for a permanent bondage, they have captured your soul because it is you who invited that spirit called saints. And these saints are all fallen angels, fallen angels and familiar spirits. Or somebody tells you, you can invoke the, the, the deceased or dead relatives, your ancestors. And I see a lot of African-American who want to retrace themselves back into their ancestors and their roots who are making that diaspora uh, to Africa. And they go in there and they'll buy artifacts and they'll buy some idols and they'll go to some shrines thinking they are, they are trying to be African. They are going back to their roots. They, are, they don't know they are ushering themselves into demons. We are running from it. We are breaking ourselves from it. And people are entering into it in their ignorance. Then now witchcraft, which is now coming subtly through new age, they tell you you have, you have to practice yoga and then position yourself this way and sit this way and relax this way and, and empty yourself and open up this and open up that. What you don't know, you are opening up to Kundalini spirit, serpentine demons right from India to come and possess you. And for a brief moment, you feel like you are you, you, you are really, uh, dealing with tension and uh, relaxing yourself, what you don't know is that a demon has come in and they are, they are going to in, cause instability to emotions. And today you are happy today, tomorrow you are sad tomorrow, to, today you are cranky, tomorrow you are tense, tomorrow, the next day you are, why? Because a, a new spirit has come in and is giving you different personality. You don't even know. And they are deceiving you into thinking that you are practicing new age. Today, new age is being practiced in different business sectors. Even in the police force, there's a time whereby people just, after work, they, they, they have just connected the yoga or yogi as part of their curriculum to get them relaxed. And Christians are into yogi. You don't know, you are practicing witchcraft, witchcraft, witchcraft. So many of us have opened different portals and these portals will get your soul arrested, imprisonment. Anytime we go into all these four fake places of false religion or participate in these false rituals, we give access to demonic spirit or the agent of darkness to capture our soul. You may leave their presence, but you have they have something that belongs to you that is in their possession. And therefore, from that day, they can manipulate you and they can abstract project. You can go to a psychic or a witch doctor or a voodoo priest or priestess or a spiritualist and if they love you, they like you. Oh, this woman is pretty. Okay, that's fine. From that day, that man will become your spiritual husband. That spiritual husband is not incubus or sacabus. It is the man you visited. Now they are very, they love you. Do you remember how somebody can have a crush on a woman? Somebody can have a crush on you or like you. And yet still will not be able to tell you because they don't have the courage, but they admire you from a distance. They, they 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 like you and love you, but in hiding, but they will not. The same way a person can have a crush on you. And spiritually, they don't have to come and tell you they are interested because they, you may turn them down. You say, no, no, you are not my class. I have, no, no, I, I can't be in a relationship with you. But now because spiritually, you have come into their territory. Now this, this psychic or this uh, spiritualist or even this person who practices the acupuncture or yoga with you, from that day, they can come in at will spiritually, astral project into your room and come and have sex with you. And you are, you are wondering, how come of late I'm having this encounters in my sleep? Where is it coming from? Because you have entered into the devil's territory. Sometimes the kind of movies we watch, it opens portals into our lives and these demonic entities enter in. They come in, they capture your soul. At that moment, they have the power. It's all about control. 
As demons want to control you, witches want to control you, familiar spirits want to control you. All they want is an access, you inviting them by sin, by sin, by you going contrary to God's word, and they will, they will just rush into it. They will just rush in and possess you. And then you tell them, go. They'll say, I'm not going because you invited me. You are the one who started watching this uh, pornography. Somebody, because of one pornographic thing that popped up that you should have clicked and deleted immediately, you said, oh, let me look at it. And then you watched it five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or just one time. Now you realize that something is drawing you back again. You want to now watch it again. You didn't have that problem, but it popped up on your face uh, or on your computer, and you entertained the idea by watching it again and again. Now the spirit from that pornography jumped into you and now possessed you. Now you want to stop. But now you are hooked with it. Somebody just took one drug to, to just try it out. Today he's hooked to it. He keeps on going back because those demons have possessed you. Somebody in 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 invited you or told you to do this ritual. You did it and you saw some movement or some things working for you. Uh, or whether it is uh, Ouija board, whatever necromancy, reading your star, reading your... And you've been so interested because... When you did it, it gave you some predictions. You are so excited. You wanted to look into it. Maybe you did it out of ignorance. But still, the demons and the witch, whoever is the necromancer or whoever is the psychic, they've arrested your soul. They have arrested your soul. Now, because you have violated the ordinances of Jehovah, and therefore demons and witchcraft and unclean spirits now have access. Now they come in to have access into our souls, and then they hold you in bondage. Now you want to stop the very thing you started, but now you are not in control, and therefore you can't stop. You want to stop masturbating, but they have possessed you. You want to stop fornicating, but they have possessed you. There are people who will, have, will feel funny on their private part, and something is moving them. Just, I have to have sex. If I can't, then I have to masturbate. Or... Why? Because it's not them. It's a compulsion. They are being compelled by a demonic force. Why? Because it was just because of a portal, an opening. Sometimes even the song that you listen to. And that's why when you become a Christian, you have to what? Shut all these gates. There are what is called about seven to nine gates in our lives that we have to shut so that we don't get ourselves imprisoned. Tonight, I don't know, the Holy Spirit is leading us into things that can cause you to be imprisoned. Things that can cause us to be imprisoned. This is where the Holy Spirit is leading us. So let me address those issues. There are about seven to nine areas that you have to guard yourself against. Otherwise, you can easily be captured by demonic spirit, unclean spirit, and be imprisoned. The first one is called... I'm going to talk about the seven. Just give me a minute and please be attentive because it doesn't matter how we pray. I bind you, I cast you, breathe it out. I cast you out and the spirit come out. If you don't know how to shut these portals, I'm telling you, you'll go right back and be captured again. And that's why sometimes for us deliverance ministers, over the years, we've realized that one of the greatest deliverance we can give to people is knowledge, knowledge. Because you will spend your time fasting, praying, and doing a deliverance on a person only to realize that because of lack of knowledge, you cast the demon out of them today. They will go back and pick it up again the next day. And you have to go through all over again. And the Bible says that when these demons goes out and you don't fill in or you don't shut the doors, the next time they are coming back, they come back seven much, seven times more stronger. So if I cast a demon, one demon out of you, they are coming back the next time seven. If I cast now, if it's two, the next time it, it's going to not, not seven, but 14, there's increment. So sometimes when a person is not ready for deliverance, don't even start doing deliverance on them. Because if you do deliverance on them and they are not ready to stop certain habits and certain behaviors and they keep on messing around, 
their situation will be worse off than when they came in. And therefore, over the years, I've, I've learned that when a person is not ready for deliverance, preach the word of God to them, get them prepared to change their ways and to be ready to give their life to Christ so that they don't keep on going back to their vomit. Otherwise, you get your deliverance and the person's state becomes worse because they are not ready to put an end to the very thing that kept them in bondage again. And then the demons will increase in their lives. So I'm dealing with things that can cause your things. Please, today, God is trying to give you knowledge. Yesterday was the deliverance. Yesterday, God in his mercy, it's like you've met Jesus Christ and you are bound, you are possessed, you are tormented. The Lord Jesus will just come in and cast the demon out and relieve you. After that, he has to teach you how to maintain your deliverance, how to sustain your deliverance, and how to walk in your liberty. And that's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9, that true knowledge, the righteous, will be delivered. True knowledge. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Not only does the truth set you free, it makes you free. It makes you to walk in your liberty, in your freedom, in your emancipation. So that you don't have to deal with certain attacks. There are people who are constantly going through certain attacks because of the certain behavior and attitude and certain things they do. That always allows demonic spirit and witchcraft spirit to hold them in bondage and captivity. And there are some people too, they may, they may not pray as much as you pray. They may not fast as much as you fast. But they leave the word of God and practice obedience to the scriptures and therefore they don't fight demonic entities as that much why because they don't give the devil a legal right and a legal ground and while some of us to die by fire die by thunder after that you go and masturbate die by fire die by die by thunder after that you go and fornicate commit adultery or go and do lie gossip hatred hatred and these things allow these demons to still hold us in bondage. So tonight, God is trying to help us to be able to abstain, abstain from demonic assignment. I wish I knew this was where God was taking us. <laughs> but since, so I, I, listen to me, everything coming now is going to come directly from heaven without, because there's no how I, um, uh, what I was expecting, but the Holy Spirit is saying that today you should know how to protect yourself from being spiritually imprisoned. One of the things that can cause people, first of all, let me break down what is spiritual imprisonment. Spiritual imprisonment is when the soul of an individual has been arrested by demonic entities or unclean spirit, or witchcraft spirit, and now they place your spirit in, 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 in a prison or in a cell so that now they can, one, impose their will on you, impose their will on you, and force you against your will to do their bidding. When a demonic spirit, unclean spirit, and it could be a witchcraft spirit, familiar spirit, monitoring spirit, ancestry spirit, Asian spirit, whatever spirit it is, is able to capture your soul. And your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. Follow me because everything is directly from the spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Your emotion is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. So now these unclean spirits have access into your soul, takes you captive, and now they can put you in their prison or cell or cage and then begin to what? Have dominion to control, to dominate, manipulate, and control you against your will. Once your soul is captured, you are no more in control. Once your soul is captured, you are now a slave to that demon or witch or wizard. They can place a limitation, a restriction on you because 
when a bird is caged. That's why Psalms 124 says, Let my soul escapes as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and I have escaped. Paul, um, David was talking as to how his soul had been captured as though he had become like a bird in a cage. Birds are supposed to fly, but because he is now bound and tied up spiritually into that cage, he is now limited. Meaning that once you are imprisoned spiritually, one of the things you begin to experience is restriction and limitations. You cannot fulfill God's ultimate purpose or plan and assignment for your life because your your captive or the one who has captured you will place an embargo, a restriction, a lid, a cap, a gate on you so you can't fly. So you realize that you are always operating beneath your potential. You will begin to realize that though you have so much potential, but you are not operating with your maximum potential. Why? Because there's restriction. At your workplace, you are so talented, you are so smart, you have your certificate, but yes, still, you, you cannot go to certain heights, certain levels, because spiritually, it could be the powers in your own fam- father's house, powers in your own mother's house, household witches in your own mother's house or father's house, evil authors. And some of this spiritual imprisonment, we went, we were even in prison before we were born because the same spirit that imprisoned your mom or dad can also arrest and imprison you. If a person is born a prisoner and they give birth in prison, the child automatically grows, uh, will, will come out of their womb in the prison cells spiritually. And then the demons may also have access into the child. So it pl- brings limitation, restrictions. They begin to have command and control over your life. They begin to dictate your life. And remember, you are dealing with agents of darkness. They don't have any good intention. So they bring delay. They bring stagnation. They bring retrogression. They bring frustration to your life. They cause you to work hard and not being paid. They cause you not to experience the blessing of God, the glory of God. Everything in your life is set back, delayed. You are denied rejection, disappointment, humiliation. When all these things are going on, begin to deal with spiritual imprisonment. Spiritual imprisonment, meaning your soul has been caged and is under the control. When demons have access easily into your life to do their will against you, whether attacking you through your dreams, attacking your head, your flesh, attacking your, your mind, attacking your emotions, it means that spiritually something is not right. Because a true child of God filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with power should not be caged. Should not be caged. And one of the things you'll be learning, if God permits, maybe tomorrow, is knowing that even Christians, if you don't pay heed, you can be caged. Like David said, my soul has escaped as a bird out of the snares of the fowler. The snare is broken and I have what escaped. Your soul can be arrested. One of the things that can, a major gateway into demons and witches and altars and evil spirits, unclean spirits from ar- arresting the souls of men is, the, is, is sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So whenever people are indulged in sin, sin means disobeying God's commandment, going contrary to God's will and ways, meaning you don't follow the Bible. You are doing your own thing. And therefore, you will be trespassing, doing things contrary to the will of God. The way you treat women, the way you treat finances, the way you treat your own life, you are not even finding out from the word of God what God is saying and you are just doing your own things and you think it's okay because the society thinks it's okay. You are not finding out the way God says people should dress, women should dress or men should dress. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a fashion and therefore I'll go ahead and tattoo on my body. I'll go ahead and, and put in, uh, um, rings in my nose, in my tongue, in my navels and it's my body, it's my soul. I, I, people are doing this so now you begin to do your own thing. Oh, it's, it's, it's our culture. Gays and lesbianism is approved. So what? 
are cheating on your spouse. So everybody's doing it. So, so now you are not going by the word of the Lord. You start doing your own things, and now these demons will have access into your life. Ezekiel, the first one is sin. Ezekiel 39, verse 23. And the hating shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity, into prison, into bondage for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. They sinned against me. Therefore, I hid my face from, I hid, I, I hid my face from and gave them into the hands of their enemies. So they, they fed, they were, so they fell by the sword. God says that the only reason my children went into captivity because they sinned against me and they were taken captives. Sin, sin, your personal sin, my personal sin, my personal disobedience to the word of the Lord. The things I watch, the things I listen, the things I do, the things I think about are outside of the will of God will give legal grounds and legal rights for demons and witches and unclean spirits to have access and come in to come and capture you. It doesn't matter whether you're a pastor. It doesn't matter whether you're a deacon. It doesn't matter whether you, you pray or you fast. If you sin, the devil will come in and capture your soul. And that's why we've even seen some great men of God who were doing so well. Immediately, they gave way to the devil. And the, oh, there was a scandal. This pastor was... Uh, sleeping with a prostitute or sleeping with a church member or was into this and no one to do that. The devil comes in, captures them and destroys their lives and destroys their own ministry. The devil doesn't care your, uh, your, your, your reputation or your, 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 your position. If you play a game with sin, the devil will come in to destroy. Solomon was beloved of God, beloved of God. God loved him so much. But when he entertained the sin of marrying foreign women who introduced him to idol worshipping, immediately Solomon fell from the grace of God and he was possessed by demons and they messed him up. That's how he lost his throne and lost his kingship. Why? Because Solomon started marrying other women from different nations, from the Moabites, from Egypt, and they were introducing him into other foreign gods. One of the greatest sin God hates is idol worshipping. Idol worshipping. Idol worshipping is number one. And that's when you start going through the Ten, ten Commandments. It says that you shall have no other God beside me. Have no other God beside me. And then the second one is that don't make yourself any grieving images. And don't, he comes back, don't use the name of the Lord in vain. And then he talks about observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So you realize that the first four, ten commandments is talking about God's sovereignty and the fact that those who worship him must be very careful that they don't worship him in addition with any other idol. Because it is the first and foremost sin he will not, he will not. When he comes judging you, he will judge you to the third, fourth, to the first, second, third, to fourth generation and release his judgment. And he will also sit back and see the devil and demons have control over your life because he is a, one of the things about God is he is a jealous God. That is the difference between the devil and God. You can serve the devil. You can serve Lucifer and serve God at the same time. You can serve the devil and then serve other things. That's okay with the devil. And that's why in the devil's kingdom, if you serve the marine kingdom, just serve the marine kingdom. He knows that at the end of the day, you are serving him. If you are serving ancestral spirit, serve ancestral spirit, because at the end of the day, it, it is But with God. Even when you come to God with your whole life and you say, Lord, I'm serving you with all my body, soul, and spirit, but I will not... I'm serving you with everything, but my eyes is not going to serve you. My eyes will be watching pornography. God will say, it's, I don't like it. I don't accept it. God, you serving God, he's, he wants your eyes to serve him, meaning that your eyes will have to do things to please him. But God, I, I'm serving you with my whole body, but my ears, I want to be listening to worldly song. God says that, that's not me. I'm so jealous. I want your eyes to worship me by watching good things. I want your ears also 
to be listening to godly songs. But God, I'm serving you with my eyes. Yes, let my mouth, at least let my mouth also do its own thing. So I'll curse. I'll say negative words. God says, no, you can't serve me with your mouth. Meaning that when you are serving God, he demands everything about you. Whilst the devil can tell you, if you are serving the devil, if you are serving the devil, the devil doesn't mind. Oh, you can serve the whole God with your all your body. Only serve me with your eyes. Just use your eyes to last for me. Just use your eyes to watch perverse, perverse naked bodies, naked women. Just lose, use your eyes to be watching pornography. Just use your eyes to envy. And the devil will be okay. Because he knows that with God, just one member of your body not worshipping him disqualifies you from everything. Oh, I will serve the Lord, but I will masturbate. And the devil can say, you can serve the whole God as you want, but you'll be masturbating for me. You can serve your whole God, but you just be performing this ritual for me. So remember that the God that you serve, if you want to walk with him, he is a jealous God. That is the difference between God and the devil and the demonic worship. He wants the entirety of your body, soul, and spirit, your heart, your mind, your brain, your everything must start worshiping him before he will accept it. You cannot serve God with your eyes and serve the devil with your ears. The devil is okay with it, but not with God. Not with God. Because God is what? A jealous God. And that's why those, we have different kingdoms in the satanic kingdom. We have people who are into marine kingdom. We have people who are into Freemason. We have people who are into idol worship. We have people who are worshiping trees. We have people who are worshiping rivers. There are people who are worshiping fire. But the devil is okay. The devil is not competing because you can worship any other things as long as you are not giving your entire worship to Jesus Christ, God. But come to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm worshiping you on Sunday, but I worship Buddha on Tuesday. I worship Muhammad on Thursday, uh, Friday, and I worship New Age. You can't do that with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's why in modern day, what the devil is tricking many Christians is mixed Christianity. You say you worship God, but then you go to a false church and they say that in addition to your worshiping God, be using this herb house. In addition to your worshiping God, be using this candle. Be using, in addition to worshiping God, use this frank incense and meh. In addition to worshiping your God, it's okay, you can pray, you can fast. In addition to worshiping your God, you can also use this Florida water for this ritual. In addition to worshiping your God, you can do that. But this, uh, you can also go to the water uh, and, and, and have a spiritual bath. In addition to worshiping God, you can also do this and do this. And gallebo ignorant Christians think that by so doing, they are worshiping God. Not knowing that because you have mixed the worship of God with the worship of the devil, you are rejected. But the devil is okay with it. So he makes you go to church. He makes you pray. He makes you fast. He makes you do all the right things. And then in your secret closet, you are burning candles. In your secret closet, you are using Florida what and it is working for you. But what you don't know is that the Lord God Almighty Jehovah, because he's a jealous God, he will tell you on the, on the judgment day, I know you not, you workers of iniquity, because you mixed my worship with the worship of new age, with my worship of science, with the worship of crystal ball, and all this other false religion that you were into. What, are, what books are you reading? What books are you reading? What res recitation are they teaching you to recite? to bring and to conjure other saints and you are deceived into thinking, oh, I, 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 I'm a Christian, but I do this at the side and it gives you... <laughs> the devil is okay. The devil is so pleased because he knows that you are already disqualified from Jehovah. You are you are worshipping other false... For, that's why the devil of late is giving us what false prophets on social media who are mixing religion. So now, oh, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Catholic and I love the Pope. But the same Pope is now telling you that it is okay to embrace the gays and lesbians. And it's okay. So now he has deceived people. Say, oh, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Christian. But I'm also including 
the acceptance of gays, lesbians, and LBGAT group. And God says that you can't worship me and endorse what is abomination to me. And therefore, I spit you out. But you know, you see how the, dev the demons, the devil works. He now makes you say you are a Christian and still adapt his system into your Christianity because he knows by so doing, you are ultimately disqualified because the God we serve is a jealous God. And that's why today they are what makes what Christianity, diluted, contaminated, polluted Christianity. We are worshiping God and worshiping the devil. And the devil says that the only way I can get Christians to be messed up is to mix. Because if I tell them that they should come and worship demons and worship idols, they will say, no, 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 that's not what our God said. But if I mix it and I now can mix new age, I can mix uh, yoga and I can mix all these things into their religion and blend it. And now they can do all these things as, at, at the same time, they are worshiping God and praising God and experiencing all these things. It's good. That's the end time deception. And now that's why what the Pope is what endorsing. Gradually infiltrating. Now they are coming up with the new world religion. Whereby you see some of our charismatic leaders teaming up with the Pope. Teaming up with Muslim sheikhs. Teaming up with all different uh, religious leaders together. Talking about one world religion. And Christians are buying into it. We have a group of Christians we will buy into everything. Recently, this guy just came from nowhere, Kenya West. Kenya West came from nowhere. I'm born again. I'm born again. Christians will not examine this guy's life to see whether his Christianity is true Christianity without any testing and trying and watching and observing that we will jump on board. Kenya West is a Christian. Kenya West is doing a movement. Let's follow him. Today, what, what is what is that Kenya West leading you into? And what we don't know is that it's the emerging of the world with Christianity so that people will be what? Bound, so bound. It's all about the devil tying our souls and keeping us in bondage and in captivity. So the first thing is sin. Sin, personal sin, disobedience against God is going to open you up for demons to bind you and imprison you, for witches in your family to bind you. And that's why the greatest thing you must be afraid of is sin. Don't be afraid of the devil. Be afraid of sin. In your secret place, close it. Do your very everything possible to avoid sin because sin is what is keeping, will keep you in bondage. The, the easiest way to be in bondage and to be attacked and to be oppressed is sin. So run away. So the next time you are saying no to the man because you are refusing to sleep with him, know that you are delivering your own soul. The next time you see that pornography and you are walking away from it or you are, you are blocking it, you are keeping your own soul from being in bondage and captivity. The next time you, you call the woman to say, you know what, every relationship I had with you, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. It's wrong. You are delivering your own soul from destruction. Sin is one of the ways the devil comes in to keep, keep us in bondage. The next one is iniquity. Iniquity is when your soul is captured. And some of us, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I don't watch pornography. I don't hate people. I read my Bible. I give. I how quiet, Reverend, Reverend K, why am I going through this problem? Why am I still sleeping and seeing people feeding me? Why am I sleeping and seeing these attacks? Why am I having this spiritual husband? Why am I, why is nothing working for me? But yes, so all my life, I don't remember going to the psychic, reading uh, horror, uh, bad books and horror movies. And I, I have done everything I know possible to live a righteous life. Even if I did it in the past, I've repented, I've renounced it, denounced it hundred times, many times. So why am I still in this? Some of us, it's because of our parents. You can inherit an iniquity that your mom or your father was involved in and it begins to go through your blood and allows demons 
to come in to also attack you and imprison you. So that now you are going through some certain warfare prayers, warfare attacks, not because of your personal sin, but because of the iniquity of your ancestors. Today I was listening to a lady who was giving her testimony as to how she was into witchcraft and then her parent, her mother, or her father killed her mother and killed himself. And so now that he's a Christian, he's fighting some battles all because of what his grandfather and his parents did. And it gave the devil the legal right to hold her in bondage and captivity. So it is not because of her personal sin, but because of the sins of her mom and dad and her grandparent. Before some of us even came into this world, some of our grandparents and parents were into animal sacrifice to idols or human sacrifice because they were into Freemason, into Illuminati, into some lodges, into some certain courty groups. Some of them were into certain diabolic things. They did it all to get ahead in life, to get position, fame, wealth, riches. You were not born. But because your ancestors did it, the Bible says that the judgment of God will come into the family, into the third, fourth generation. And then you are within that fourth generation. So you come and you realize that you are prone to drugs, you are prone into uh, prostitution, you are prone into masturbation, you are prone into certain sins, and it comes to you easily. You easily have interest in all these things, occultic things, and your you are seeing things crawling and, and, and scratches in your room, shadows and all this, and you're asking, what is going on? Because your parent or grandparent opened the portals, and because you have not shut these portals because of the iniquities of your parents, grandparents, and ancestors, now you are fighting a battle which did not start because of you. So the sins of your parents. So when you are praying, you have to ask the Lord, Father, forgive me from any iniquities I have inherited from my parents, grandparents, or my ancestors. That has given the legal right for these demons to hold me bound. Why? A woman came to Maryland for a deliverance conference. She has about two children, women, and all of them cannot have children. They cannot marry. They cannot marry. And I said, woman, what's going on? And she says that there was a time in my life I couldn't be pregnant. Somebody told me to go and see a witch doctor. I went in. He gave me some rituals and some eggs and things to do. I did it, and then I became pregnant and with these children. But afterwards, there was a covenant that all your children will be married to that altar. And therefore, they are spiritually married to that spirit where the mom went. So these young girls, they don't understand why they are unable to get married, any relationship they get into collapse because they are, their mother was the one who went to make the covenant with that evil altar so that the altar will help her to become pregnant. And now that she has these children, there's what? There is a price to pay. The children are paying the price of what the mom did. I think in a... Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 29 the Bible says that the fathers have eaten sour grapes, sour grapes bitter grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge, meaning that your father, your mother was the one who was involved in that bitter thing but even though they swallowed it, you are the one who is tasting the bitterness it is not them who is tasting the bitterness you are the one tasting the bitter, bitterness. Even though it was as a result of your mom or your, your dad, places they went, things they were involved in, occultic practices, false religion, traditions that is against the ordinances of God. Some of you are coming from a culture whereby every woman who is born even some women do, some cultures do female circumcision. It is only men male who should be circumcised. Some cultures, the woman's clitoris, the clitoris is cut as a circumcision. And when this thing happens, it opens them up into what prostitution and lust. Some traditions, the woman must be half naked and taken to certain puberty rites in order to introduce them into womanhood. And then they become naked 
and then they, 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 they bath them and all this and this gives access to these demons and when you were growing up they took you to through these rituals and now you don't understand why you can't marry because you were married to an idol in your mother's house or father's house through the ungodly traditions or customary rites that was practiced. Even some of the naming ceremonies. Some families in the naming ceremony will be pouring libation, pouring alcohol, doing all sort of putting marks on the baby and all these things. What were they doing? They were in, de dedicating you to foreign idols. Before you even started what life, your parents in their ignorance did that. Some people also went into false religion and they'll tell you to bring your baby or bring your daughter and bring this and we'll take you to the river and we have to go and give you a spiritual bath and put your clothing in water. Can you imagine somebody telling you they are putting your dress in the river? They have put in your glory in that river. How you have made a covenant with the marine demon by going to that river or they take you to the cemetery to perform a certain rite. When all these things have taken place, whether by you or your parents, it brings iniquity. Iniquity means that the sins of our parents, some of us, the battle we are fighting is because of our parents. And that's why last time I was telling you, find out from your parents or your aunties or the elderly in your family, why are people going through what they are going through in the family? I remember a woman, two ladies also who could never get married. Why? Because their father was into a secret society. And the father was worshipping a god, an idol, who was a symbol of a dog. And for that, they gave him about two dogs in his house. And it was a representation of those idols. The man died and married her own daughters to these two dogs. So anyone who comes into that house and meets those dogs, the dogs will be playing with you as though they are playing with you. But the next minute, the man will never come back into that house because... The destiny, the mighty glory of those women were tied to those dogs. That was the covenant he had made with that dog spirit. The, ha the head of that demon was a dog and its body part was human. And it gave the man some fiscal dogs to, to what? Monitor the girls to make sure they never marry on this earth until they got their deliverance. Many things have happened and Sometimes our parents did it in their ignorance. They were looking for solution. And therefore, they entered into a false religion whereby they were, they were introduced to all sorts of diabolic things. When you become a Christian, you must disconnect yourself from this ungodly iniquities that has brought a curse upon your life and has given demons and witches the right to capture your soul. I'm just telling you how your soul can be captured even when you, yourself, are living right. And there's a scripture for it. It's called the lawful captive. The lawful captive. Let me give you a scripture that will let you understand it. Let's go to Isaiah chapter. Let's see. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 24. You, I know you love the Lord. I know you pray. I know you've been fasting. I know you've been giving. I know you've been doing everything. So why are you going through what you are going through? You are a lawful captive. You are a lawful captive. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 verse 24. Listen to this. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Shall the prey? The person who has been taken bound in imprisonment by the captor, by the devil, by demons and witches, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Can such a person who is in prison be delivered? That's the question. Or the captives of the righteous be delivered? The captives of the righteous... A person has captured the righteous. The question is that how can a righteous man or woman be captured by the captive? Because of iniquity. You are righteous. You are prayerful. But you have not dealt with your past. You have not dealt with that sin that your father was involved in. Some 
people's parents caused murder. Some people's parents destroyed other lives. Some of our parents were into voodoo in Haiti. Witchcraft, sorcery, secret societies, worshipped foreign god and were into foreign religion. And you, you came out of your mom and your dad. You have not addressed it. So now the devil says, even though you are righteous, you have not dealt with your foundational issue. So all the captive of the righteous be delivered. Even the righteous one has been captured. Now you are in prison. And you are saying, Lord, I love you. I serve you. I give. I tight. I'm fasting. But why am I having this spirit husband? Why am I not moving ahead? Why cannot, can't I get a job? Why can't I get married? Lord, what is wrong? The more I fast, the more they are attacking me. That, that doesn't make sense. The more you are fasting, the more you are going through attacks in your dream. The more you do warfare prayers, the more demons are tormenting you. Uh, you are wondering what is going on. And that's why, why, because you are a captive of the righteous because of the iniquity of your parents, grandparents, or ancestors. They did certain things against God by worshiping foreign gods or sinned against God and has given legal rights and legal grounds for the devil to come in to hold you in bondage. Hold you bound. And because of that, today you cannot move forward because of the sins of your parents, your grandparents, or your ancestors. I pray for you that today may the Lord Jesus Christ, by his blood, cleanse you, cleanse me from the iniquities of our parents, from the iniquities of our mother, our fathers, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, our ancestors, or our predecessors, anything they did contrary to the word of God to bring in, to incur into our lives a bondage and has caused us to be imprisoned by demonic entities, spirit husband, spirit wife, ancestral spirit monitoring, spirit wife, everywhere you go, people are monitoring you. And because are, you are being monitored, it's causing always rejection and disappointment and disfavor. It's because there's something that has not been dealt with. The iniquities of your parents. May the Lord bring deliverance to us right now. Let the blood of Jesus speak for us. Let the blood of Jesus speak for us and disconnect. Say, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, disconnect me from the iniquities of my parents, the iniquities of my mother, the iniquities of my father, the iniquities of my grandparents, my ancestors, my predecessors. Let the blood of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus disconnect me from the sins of my ancestors. And Lord, let the precious blood forgive me from my own sins. So now the Bible says that, shall the brave be taken from the mighty or the captive of the righteous be delivered? But that says the Lord, there's hope for you. But that says the Lord. This is the question being asked. Can you be delivered? Would you be delivered? Even if you were the one who by your own sin, by your own fault, by your own transgression, messed up because of something you did to somebody. And we have all sinned. Have you not hurt somebody before? Have you not sinned against somebody? Some of us, we have cheated on somebody. Some of us, we have, we have betrayed others. Some of us, we have lied on people. Some of us, we have betrayed others, used people and dumped them. Some of that, we have promised people and we have not followed through. Some of that, we have hurt people. We have done all sorts of sins against ourselves. Is anybody listening to me who has never offended anybody, sinned against anybody? You, thank God, you are, you are an angel. But for me, I've sinned. And the devil could use it against us had it not been for the blood of Jesus. That the blood will cleanse us from all our sins and that of the iniquities of our parents. Say, the blood of Jesus, show me mercy. Blood of Jesus, show me mercy. Blood of Jesus, show me mercy and forgive me from my personal sins and that of the iniquities of my parents and grandparents. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, meaning your sin, putting you in captivity, and the captive of the righteous, a righteous person who is in bondage because of the sin. And you will find out if you read, you read the Bible, the Bible says that when the Babylonians came and captured Israel, listen to this. Today I'm saying I didn't prepare for this, but God says you need to hear this. 
because through knowledge you are going to be delivered through knowledge you are going to be set free through knowledge that spiritual marriage that attack on your life has come to an end once you get revelation understanding you are coming out of spiritual imprisonment spiritual bondage spiritual captivity spiritual stronghold of the enemy by the truth by the truth now when the children of israel turned against god they were invaded they sinned against god there was an invasion decimation and exile whenever we sin against god there's what's called invasion decimation and exile whenever sin goes against god invasion means demons and the enemy are able to come in to have legal access into our lives decimation they come in to steal kill and to destroy exile they come to take you a captive a prisoner so every time the children of israel will sin against god god allowed invasion of foreign nations who were unbelievers to come and take them captives take them in bondage take them as slaves take them as prisoners decimate destroy the whole of israel Some, many times they will burn down jerusalem burn down their temple burn down and, and steal all their belongings and steal all their blessings so immediately you start sinning and doing your own things you realize that now demons are coming into your life not only into your life into your marriage and they destroy the marriage they move into your son they destroy your children they destroy your finances everything about you begins to be destroyed because the devil comes to steal, to kill and destroy. After that, now they hold you in bondage. You are under demonic oppression. You are under demonic suppression. You are under demonic captivity. You are not yourself. Demons are now controlling you. Witches are now manipulating you because invasion, decimation, and exile, they put you in bondage and imprisonment. When the Babylonian came because Israel had sinned against God, Remember, the Bible says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel were also part of the young men who were also taking prisoners. Oh, Israel sinned against God. Judah, Je Judah have sinned against God. But Daniel is a righteous man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are righteous. How come they were taken captive? They were taken captive because of the sins of their parents. Daniel was a righteous man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was a righteous man. But when they were being taken captive, they took all of them into captive, into exile, into prison. Daniel was also part of the prisoners. So whenever you are reading the book of Daniel in Babylon, it's because he was taken a prisoner. Precious one, that's what is called the righteous captive. You can be in bondage, in captivity, in slavery because of the iniquity of your parents. If you don't allow God to give you revelation, knowledge. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. And for you to address why you went into that bondage and begin to ask God that, Father, I'm a righteous person. My mother did it. My father did it. But don't let me pay the price of their sin. So, Lord, bring me out of this bondage. The devil, out of ignorance, you will die in bondage. But today, because of true knowledge, the righteous will be delivered by this knowledge. May you not suffer for the sins and iniquities of your mother, your father, or your ancestors, your grandparents. May the blood of Jesus atone for your sins. May the blood of Jesus atone for your iniquity. And I pray in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let any righteous who have been taken captive by any demon let that demon loose you and let you go loose you and let you go open that prison door open that prison gate and let you out because the blood of jesus is speaking for you the blood atones for your sins and the iniquities of your parents you shouldn't be in bondage anymore the blood the blood the blood the blood of jesus exempt you from that captivity in the name of Jesus. Say, blood of Jesus, speak for me. Say it seven times. Blood of Jesus, speak for me. 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 When you don't have the speaking blood, speaking for you as a righteous, 
because of iniquity of your parents, premature death can kill you. Coronavirus can kill you. You will be dead and misfortune and adversity will hit you and waste your life. And people say, oh, but he was a good Christian. He loved the Lord. How come this misfortune happened to them? Because of the iniquities of his parents, which because of ignorance, he didn't address. The same spirit that killed his mom and dad because of cancer is also about to kill her out of cancer. The same spirit that killed his family members through premature death is the same spirit coming after her or her son. The same spirit that destroyed your uncle is the same spirit after your son. But because you don't understand knowledge that I must put an end, I must put an end to the iniquities that is fighting against me, giving legal rights and legal ground for demons to come into my life to invade, decimate, and take me captive. Let the blood redeem me and my family. If you don't know how to do this thing, I've seen too many nice Christians. They've been wasted because they didn't have the knowledge. That is why some of you thank God that you are brought into this platform to learn this secret, learn this knowledge, and to redeem yourself in the name of Jesus from the powers of darkness. I came to prophesy to somebody because of this knowledge. Any demonic entity, any witchcraft entity, any evil power that is after your life to destroy you, it will not succeed because the blood of Jesus speaks better things. Speaks better things. Speaks better things. And it erases every iniquities of your ancestors, your parents and grandparents in the name of Jesus. Shall the prayer be taken from the mighty? I command the unconditional release of every captive, of everyone in bondage, anyone in prison. I command your unconditional release now. Let that spirit husband release you now. Let that spirit wife release you now. Let that witch release you now. Let that wizard release you now. Let that family altar release you now. Let that strong man release you now. Let that strong woman release you now. Let that monetary spirit release you now. Let them follow you no more, for you are be redeemed by the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Speak for me. May the blood speak for your son. May the blood speak for your daughter. May the Lord blood speak for you. May the blood redeem you and your family from the destruction of the enemy. You are not a prisoner. You are not a prisoner. The blood speaks. We know the truth. So the truth shall set us free. Ignorance, ignorance. You will die. You will die. Oh, she was a nice Christian. Oh, he was a nice... Oh, I've seen it. This world, you have to get secrets. You have to have secrets. Don't be walking around, you know, they will take you out. You'll be a Christian, all right, you'll go to heaven prematurely. You will go to heaven prematurely. This earth, they'll kill you. This earth, they'll kill you if you don't have the secret of life. So don't think when you come here, it's jokes. No, 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 no. We, please, some of you, thank God you have come to learn knowledge and to be redeemed from distractions of the devil. From today, because of this knowledge, no more will you be experiencing that evil visitation. Because when they come, they will see the blood speaking for you. Because now you know who you are. You have been redeemed by the blood of the lamp. That spirit husband, that spirit wife, those witches, that spirit of death and destruction, they cannot touch you because your life has been redeemed by the blood, by the blood in Jesus' name. Shall the prey Isaiah 49 verse 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the captive of the righteous be delivered? But thus says the Lord. This is what God is saying about you. Even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. Hey, it doesn't matter what devil, what witch, what wizard, what strong man, what agent, what altar, what river, what tree, what evil spirit has held you bound. God says that the captive of the mighty shall be delivered. I came with the prophetic word of God, the word of deliverance in the name of Jesus. I command every prisoner be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose. I will command every prison door. Open every prison door. Open every prison door. Open and let the angel of Jehovah minister deliverance. Bring you out. Bring you out. Bring you out. I see chains falling. I see jokes breaking. I see shackles breaking. In the name of Jesus. Be loose in Jesus' name. Yes. The captive of the mind will be delivered. I release the deliverance power of God into your life right now. As you hear the word of the Lord, led by the power of the Holy Ghost, the chains be broken, yokes be broken, evil covenant be broken, 
Evil parts be broken. Evil promises be broken. Ancient treaties be cancelled by the blood. I command your release. Be released. Let your son be released. Let your husband be released. In the name of Jesus. Now you know why your marriage is suffering. Now you know why your marriage is suffering. Because there are ancient powers that does not allow marriages to prosper because of demons that has held people into captivity long time ago. Nobody succeeds in marriage. And that's why you are in marriage and you are you feel like quitting and divorcing. It's not you. It's not you. It's not you. Your aunties have quit. Your uncles have quit. Your mother quit. Your auntie, your grandmother quit. The, 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 the altar does not allow nobody. Now you understand why you have tried and tried and you can't get ahead in life. You can't sustain a job. You can't get a job. Financially, you are broke because there's an altar of poverty. It doesn't matter how much money you make. In a year, you will lose everything. It doesn't matter how high you go. At the end of the day, you will drop low. And that's why you, you dream and you find yourself climbing a ladder or climbing a hill or a mountain and then you fall from a height. Every time you dream, you are falling from a height. Every time you dream, you are walking in mud and you are walking... In, 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 in feces. Anytime you, you dream, you find yourself wandering around in the wilderness, not knowing your left from your right, or wearing a tattered or, or dirty clothing, or you find yourself in prison or a servant serving people, or you, you dream and you find yourself uh, being pursued by all sort of demons, or losing your teeth, or dry, uh, swimming in rivers and taking care of babies and, and this all these strange strange dreams and you wake up and say what is this because there are ancient iniquities that is fighting you but today the blood the blood the blood of the lamb the blood of jesus is showing you mercy for the bible says that i'll show mercy on whomever i'll show mercy and i'll show compassion on whoever i'll show mercy it is it is god who who shows mercy tonight god shows you mercy and the blood is bringing you out. The Bible says that even the captive of the mighty shall be delivered, will be taken away. And the prey of the terrible will be delivered. The prey of the terrible. Today, any terrible beast, every terrible altar, every terrible witch, every terrible principality, power, throne that has held you bound, that has been released to do you evil. I ask you in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver, 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 deliver. Minister deliverance. Did minister deliverance to as many as you are hearing the sound of my voice. Minister deliverance to them right now. In the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to minister deliverance to you in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to minister deliverance to you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, I will contend with him who contends with you. God says he will contend. God says that when you will now acknowledge him as your God and you want to serve him with all your heart, your soul and mind, you will begin to what, fight your battles for you. So there are demonic spirits, witchcraft spirits you have been fighting in the past because you have submitted to God. Today, the Lord will begin to fight your enemies for you. Fight the altars, fight the witches, fight the strong man. So you start dreaming and in your dream, you start wrestling with them and you are fighting them and you are defeating them. Some of you start dreaming and start vomiting things out and start getting yourself purged out. Some of you dream and you begin to have good dreams. Why? Because spiritual deliverance, God is bringing you out of the prisons of the enemy. I will save your children. This deliverance that is coming to you, not only is God setting you free from the prison, it's also going to set your sons and daughters out of the prison, out of bondage, out of captivity. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. Any demon, any altar, any unclean spirit that is are demanding your life, demanding your life. They want to sacrifice you. They want to kill you through COVID, through cancer, through witchcraft attack. Whoever has taken your name to any shrine, any evil altar, whoever has placed your picture on their altar, whoever is mentioning your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the eaters of flesh eat up their own flesh. Let those who wish you dead, let God strike them with death. Let God plague them with death and let God deliver you from any evil altar that is demanding your blood. Every evil pot demanding your blood and demanding your flesh. Let them eat up their own flesh and drink their own blood. I prophesy that you shall not die but live and declare the wonderful of the Lord. I cancel every appointment with death in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalms 102 verse 20, 
he, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to release those who are appointed to death, to hear the groanings of the prisoners, to hear the groanings of the prisoners, Psalms 102 verse 20, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those who are appointed to death in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone hearing the sound of my voice who has an appointment with death through cancer, through accident, through injury, through COVID, through sickness, through disease, through witchcraft, any appointment with death in the name of Jesus, I cancel the appointment. I cancel the appointment with the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, I cancel your appointment with death and I declare over your life, I declare over your husband, your wife, your family members that they shall not die. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the wonderful words of the Lord. The appointment with death through accident, I cancel it. The appointment with cancer, I cancel it. The appointment with sickness, disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, any heart attack, any, any cancer of the breast, cancer of the lungs, any attack of the enemy to take you out, any witch, any witch sad who want to eat up your flesh, drink your blood, who want to sacrifice you this year, or sacrifice your son, or sacrifice your husband, or sacrifice your brother or sister, Every appointment with death, it is being cancelled now in the name of Jesus. It is being cancelled now in the name of Jesus. It is being cancelled now. And I declare and I decree that you shall not die in Jesus' name. That evil dream of death that you've been seeing, I cancel that evil dream of death in Jesus' name. Let the groaning of the prisoner come to you to release those who are appointed to death. I release you from death. I release you from the spirit of death and hate. I release from the spirit of skeleton. I release you from every spirit that has been sent to come and assassinate you. You will not be assassinated. You shall not die, but you shall live. COVID will not kill you. Cancer will not kill you. Witchcraft will not kill you. No evil altar. Using your name, using your picture, using anything that belongs to you to do enchantment and conjuring and sorcery against you. It shall not stand. It shall not prosper. Whoever mentioned your name for evil, whoever does incantation against you, your picture or your name, let fire and thunder strike them. Let thunder and lightning strike them. Let thunder and lightning strike them dead. Whoever wish you dead, let the Lord kill them. Whoever wish you dead, let the Lord kill them in the name of Jesus. May the Lord contend with those who are contending with you. Fight those who are fighting you. Resist those who are resisting you. Frustrate those who are frustrating you. Disappoint your enemies. Destroy their plans and release you from their evil plans. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will contend with those who contend with you. Any spirit husband, any spirit wife, any monetary spirit, any witchcraft spirit that will try to come and touch you, rape you, eat, feed you, attack you. Let the angel of the Lord draw their sword and strike them. Smite them. Strike them. Let them not escape. Let the angel of the Lord show them mercy. Show them no mercy. Show them no mercy. Any witch or wizard who or astral project fly to come and do evil against you. Let the angel of the Lord, I deploy the sword of God. I deploy the sword of God around you. Let the angel of the Lord strike them dead. Strike them dead. Strike them dead and deliver you. From the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. I'll feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. Oh, those who wish you dead by COVID, they shall die with COVID. Those who wish you dead to die by cancer, they will die by cancer. Those who wish you dead by accident, they will have the accident and die. Those who wish you dead by their witchcraft attacks, they will die. Let every witchcraft attacks backfire, 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 return back to sender, boomerang in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord preserve your life in Jesus' name. I'll feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. And they shall be drunk with their own blood as sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I am your Savior, your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob, the Lord will deliver you and set you free from the powers of darkness. No weapon formed or fashioned against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 24. That's what we read. Now some of the things that if you don't pay attention, can cause you to be a lawful, righteous captive. One, when you are prayerless, a prayerless Christian, when you don't like prayer, anyone who is not prayerful, 
You don't work with discernment. So you can easily be captured and be destroyed. I quite remember one beautiful, nice Mother Teresa, spirited Christian woman. She was so nice. Oh, she was so nice. I knew her. She was so nice. But she was too nice in the physical and was not sensitive spiritually. So many times I'll tell her, you are nice. But spiritually, be very discerning. Don't do things because of niceness. Do things because you are led by the Holy Ghost fire. The Holy Ghost. One time, she told me her family is organizing some party. And she said, I don't feel like going. What do you think? And I said, if you don't feel your Holy Spirit in you is telling you don't go, please don't go. Discernment. When you are prayerful, you become very discerning. But she says, no, I think they are it's a family thing, so I have to be there, so I have to be there. She went. When she went, they gave her some food. Through the food, they released an arrow. Through the arrow, they got her. Through that, they gave her cancer of the brain. And through the cancer, she died. Beautiful Christian. Even to the point of dying, she was still a beautiful Christian. But she said, Reverend K, I now understand what you were teaching us on the prayer line. How we have to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. If I had taken this advice, I will not be going to heaven prematurely. So tell the saints, she did not, sensitivity, sensitivity. When you are not prayerful, you allow your soul to be captured. When you are not prayerful, you allow your enemies to set a bait and a trap for you and you fall in and they will arrest your soul and they will attack you. When you are not prayerful. Somebody will give you a gift because you are not prayerful. You will not know what is behind that gift. It's not every gift that you accept. It is not every invitation that you go. It is not every promotion that you take because it could be a setup for your distraction. But if you are prayerful, God will shut satanic open doors. That's why recently we prayed about the fact that, Lord, let there be a shutting. Shut, shut every evil door that is being opened to me. So it is not everything that it's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. No. Some open doors are satanic doors to a setup. Some relationships are some people coming into your life who are pretending to come in for your life to help you or to marry you. Or they may be an assassin, an assassin sent to come and assassinate, kill your life, kill your destiny, kill your family. And they will pretend that, oh, I love you. I want to marry you. They are an assassin sent to come and destroy you. It takes prayerfulness to be sensitive to the voice and the wing of the Holy Ghost. This beautiful Christian died because of prayerlessness and sensitivity. Also, obedience. And obedience. Obedience. If you don't learn to obey God and His commandment, and you want to do your own things, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. You don't listen. The word of God will speak, you will not listen. A prophet will speak, you don't listen. You will find yourself in a mess. Disobedience. Judges chapter 16, verse 21. But the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he, he did grind in the prison house. But the Philistines took him, put, him, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him, with feathers and brass of brass, and he did grinding in the prison house. How did something end up in prison? How did something end up in prison? God told him expressly, Don't tell anybody about your secret. Your secret is in your hair. Something says, I'll tell Delilah. And that is how he ended up in prison. Disobedience. God will tell you, Shut your mouth. You will not shut your mouth. God will say, don't date this boy, this guy. He's not good for you. Through your dreams, through prophecy, everything is indicating this guy is not good for you. He has shown you some of his characteristics and his behavior. You are saying love is blind. Love is blind. So you are putting away all the characters, all the behaviors he's showing to you. Or already, he's not married to you. And when he's angry, you can see what he can do. All the red lights are showing. But a disobedient Christian, because of Im, 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 most, your emotional instability. Some women are too emotional, inst instable, unstable. Within one year, they can be moving from about 10 men. They jump from this man and they jump to another man. They break up with this. The next week, they take up this person. Emotional instability. 
And therefore, they are always looking for somebody to make them feel they are looking for companions. Learn to be alone with God. Being alone with God is not loneliness. Being alone. First, learn to be alone with God. And kill that spirit of loneliness. And then when you are able to be independent with yourself and you're at peace, you are ready for marriage. But people think that the only happiness they have is to be in a relationship. So every month they are looking for a new person. A new, desperate, and every person coming around is not good. It's not good. It is, um, it is going to destroy your life. I'm warning you. Emotional instability. When you see yourself always looking to be in, in a relationship, looking, it means that you are not ready for a relationship. You have to be able to be content being alone first with God and you're okay. Independent first and you're okay. Then you say, now I'm ready to be in a relationship. But when you realize that your soul, soul is looking to be validated, to be allowed, to be accepted, you want somebody to make you happy, you want somebody to make you feel okay, hey, you are not ready. You are not ready because you can never find peace, love, joy, and fulfillment in a human being. I'm telling you, the man coming is already messed up. He has his own problem. And he's not going to be the one to give you any happiness. You will never find happiness in a man. You will never have, find happiness in a man. You will find happiness in Jesus. Go and ask many married people. If anything, it can bring you headache. If you get the wrong person, first learn to be alone first with God. And then you will overcome loneliness and be ready to what? For a relationship. Some of you are jumping from everybody. Every day, every week, you are looking for somebody else. Emotional instability. You are not ready. You are not. I'm telling you, read my lips. Otherwise, if you enter into any relationship because you are desperate, it's an assassin bullet. That person will use you, dump you, and just take advantage of you. They will know it. They know it. There are people, men, who exploit emotional women who are instable. They, 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 know, your, you, they know the kind of woman. They will come in for your money, come in for your wealth, come and take from you. Some of them come for your stars and your glory. They are not in for you. By one sex they have with you, they will take all your glory. And then after that, they will break the relationship. Your life will never be the same. Wreck you, waste you, waste you. So be patient and learn to be alone first with God. And be content with Jesus. After that, then you say, now, Lord Jesus, now that I'm okay with you, I'm ready for whoever you bring into my life. Lack of prayer, disobedience to God's word, lack of fasting, very important. Fasting and prayer sharpen your discernment, lack of the word of God. Too many people, we don't know the word of the Lord. You can easily be taken a captive. You must master these things, pray, be prayerful, obey the word of the Lord, obey the word of God, obedience. Be an addict, addict to the word of God. Be prayerful and fast. And you realize that it will be very difficult. The demons, the witches will come in many ways to come and take your soul captive. Some of us, they took our us captive by the food. By food. By food. By food. If you are a person who likes to eat everywhere, anybody's food, everywhere you go, one of the greatest levels of spirituality is able to control your appetite. Know where you can eat, where you can eat, when you can eat, whose food you can eat, and how you eat. If you want to start controlling your soul from being captured, you can't eat anywhere. Anybody who is very spiritual, they don't eat anywhere. They are very selective where they eat and whose food they eat. Hmm. You, you eat everything. You've eaten from monkey donut to donkey donut, from human human crackers, and now you are eating animal crackers from everything, everything. Chick filet to turkey filet. You've eaten everything. Somebody bring food at your workplace, you eat. Halloween candies, you eat. Halloween pie, you eat. If, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, everything, anywhere. I, I don't even last remember when I eat in the Chinese store. Chinese. Is anything wrong with the Chinese? Right? Nothing. But the fact that they are magnifying their Buddha. Before you enter even, even the Chinese store, Chinese restaurant, Buddha is already welcoming you. Welcome to Buddha. He does, uh, I say, please. Because you eat certain food and you can't pray anymore. You eat certain food and you can't fast anymore. You eat certain food, somebody's food, and you start behaving funny. You eat certain people's food and then they deposit sickness in you. 
Not only are you being fed, you've been eating until you are eating in your dream. Be careful. This woman who was destroyed, they got her through food in a party, family party, and they released the arrow through food. Get, 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 covetousness, covetousness. You can be easily captured if you are envious and covetous. Everything people have, you want to have. Oh, why did you buy this? Can you give me this? Can you give me your, can I borrow your dress? Can I borrow, you, you, you want to give everything to people or collect people's things. You inherit witchcraft. They will, they will shoot an arrow. Some of you even give and give your wedding ring, your wedding, your wedding gown. How can you give your wedding gown to somebody to go and do their wedding? Do you know what can happen? Don't be giving your dress out to people. Hey, you have a family members back home. You want to send them dressing, please. I would advise some of you, but give them money and let them buy a new one or a used one. Don't give them your dress. Because the easiest way somebody can get access to your soul and capture your soul in prison and practice witchcraft against you is through your dress or your anything that you have put on or that has your DNA. And therefore, if you know you're already under witchcraft attack, demonic attack, and evil altars, please, I know you, are, you have good heart. Rather give them money and let them buy their own dress. Don't be giving your dress out. You can give it out to Salvation Army. These are other others, but not people close to you. Otherwise, somebody who is close to you, who is an agent, will shoot an arrow, capture your soul, and destroy you. Be sensitive. Before you give money, make sure you pray over it. Many people's souls have been captured through giving. It is good to give. It is good. I never, I will never tell you to stop giving. But before you give, soak that money in the blood. And sometimes there will be somebody, angels will come and beg you for money in the roadside. The same way, witches will also come and beg you on the roadside for money. You have to be very sensitive. And that's what I'm saying. If you don't know what to do, make sure before you give any money out to any persons, you pray over it. Father, I soak this money in the blood of Jesus. As I give it to this homeless person, I sanctify it with the blood. If they are going to use it against me, let it be an arrow against them. If they are going to, if it's an angel of the Lord, let it be a blessing. You soak the money. Even if you are giving family members or whoever it is, soak your money, your money in the blood. Otherwise, somebody will get money and go and use that same money as a ritual to destroy you. After receiving your money, you will lose your job. After releasing your, you receiving your money, you will come under attack. Soak your money in the blood before you give it out and be sensitive. If, if you want to send somebody money and the Holy Spirit is telling you, don't do it. Go by the Holy Spirit. He knows why he's saying what he's doing. Very important. And if you are somebody already under witchcraft attack and demonic attack, then I'll tell you, social media is no place for you. you take it or leave it. If you are somebody who is already under severe witchcraft, demonic attacks, social media is no place for you. Don't be putting your face, your picture, and your information out there. You can open a Facebook account and use somebody's, another name, and just use other pictures. Don't put your own personal information there. It will be an easy way the demons, the witches, your enemies will arrest your soul. If you love having sex, fornication, Adultery, your soul will be captured. Read my lips, your soul will be captured. Your soul will be captured. Tonight, this how far I will give you some of these things. And may the Lord give, open your eyes and help you and deliver your soul from every spiritual prisoner. True knowledge, the righteous will be delivered in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. I pray for you that today, Every covenant that has kept your soul in bondage today by this word, the Lord Jesus says, is going to set you free. It's going to set you free. It's going to set you free. There's, I'm hearing jubilee. I'm hearing jubilee. I, I never do this. I never do this, but I hear jubilee. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. When it is jubilee, when it is jubilee time, about 50 years, jubilee, God begins to restore. God begins to restore. God begins to restore. God begins to restore things that have been wasted, things that have been destroyed. And God is saying that there are people who he is going to give them a jubilee because they have suffered enough in bondage, imprisonment. Even if somebody was a slave to you during the time of jubilee, 
you must release you must release the captives you must release the captives you must be released the captives jubilee 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 god is bringing jubilee liberty jubilee liberty jubilee liberty if you can as many as you can it's not by force please raise a sacrifice of 50 dollars and say father i tap into this jubilee please any is imprisonment some of you it could be a very huge sacrifice to you but do it and tell the lord that father bring me out bring me out of every imprisonment every imprisonment any imprisonment that i find myself in as a result of my sins or the iniquities of my parents or grandparents or ancestors or pre pre uh, my my predecessors lord i want to express your jubilee liberation your jubilee liberation your jubilee liberation in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus jubilee i hear the word jubilee i hear the word jubilee i hear the word jubilee may the lord god almighty give you that jubilee experience and bring you out and bring you out and bring you out in the name of jesus yeah please please this is the scripture this is the scripture luke chapter 4 verse 18 Luke 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year. The acceptable year. The acceptable year. Please, don't just give. Have understanding. Don't just give. Have understanding. Very important. Don't just give, but I want you to have understanding and say, Father, I have been in this bondage, this prison, this captivity, this evil cycle for too long. Lord, Lord, I am pressing myself into this jubilee, not by might or by my power, but by your spirit and by the voice of the blood. Lord, give me this jubilee breakthrough out of this prison. I don't know what couldn't make you marry. But the Jubilee grace will make you marry. I don't know what couldn't make you succeed, but the Jubilee grace will make you succeed. I don't know what has been blocking that financial breakthrough. The Jubilee grace will bring you out of that evil sickness or disease. Jubilee. I just hear the word Jubilee. And tomorrow I will lead you in praying for the Jubilee blessing. Because during the Jubilee, there's liberty. During Jubilee, you begin to possess your possession. Jubilee, during Jubilee, family restoration begins to happen. During Jubilee, increase of your field. Whatever you do, you succeed. During Jubilee, freedom from oppression. During Jubilee, God begins to give you safety. During Jubilee, you don't receive double blessing, but triple blessings. During Jubilee, these things begin to happen. Tomorrow, don't miss it. I will lead you into the Jubilee prayers as the Lord is giving somebody Jubilee. You have suffered for long. You have tried and failed for long. You've been delayed and denied for long. You have done your best. But today, the Jubilee grace and unction and by your simple sacrificial seed and somebody to be very hard but it will change that financial status it will change that unemployment status it will release that money that must come to you it will release that divine helpers that will make give you recommendation to place you where you ought to be it will give you the platform for your star to shine the jubilee grace the jubilee anointing as many as you can do it not by force not by i, I don't tell people to a specific amount but today jubilee 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 because some of us we've been in prison for too long and god is bringing you out of the prison as i told you this is not what i i plan to share with you but as i came on the holy ghost just took over and said these are the things that has kept many in bondage they are fighting battles not because of them or fighting battles because of things they've done in their past and the lord god in, in his mercy through the blood is setting them free release your faith and tap into the jubilee grace 
and see what God will do for you. You will be able to do the impossible in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Tomorrow, join me and I'll see you through the Jubilee blessings and grace. Go to our website, www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com and do it. Just obey. Obey. Just obey. You don't know what God is going to use this simple sacrificial seed to do for you. He didn't say 500. He didn't say 5,000. He says 50. 50 dollars. Just do it. 50 dollars. Jubilee. And be specific. Specific what you want God to do for you. And I pray that tomorrow before you join me, come with a prayer request. Come with your prayer request. You have your anointing oil? You have your anointing oil, right? Good. Tomorrow, come with a specific need, a prayer request. After the Jubilee prayers, I'll, I will make you put your prayer request in the oil and ask the Lord to watch over his word, to bring it to pass and break the yoke of spiritual imprisonment. So tomorrow, write five things. Five things you want God to do for you to break you out of that spiritual prison. Whatever you need, write it on a small piece of paper. And after we pray on it, we are going to put it on your olive oil and ask the Lord that the Jubilee grace will come upon you and bring you out of prison. I know what it takes, how it feels and what it means to be in prison. I know. I know. I understand. I have very much understand. And I also understand liberty. That's why I'm passionate about deliverance. I'm passionate because I know what bondage and captivity is and what liberation and freedom. And I'm emancipating it. May the Lord Jesus bring you deliverance. Go to the website, www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com or cash app is Fresh Fire Prayer. Cash app, Fresh Fire Prayer. Release your jubilee sacrifice and say, Lord, buy this $50. Lord, any spiritual imprison, imprisonment, let the prison gates and prison doors be broken in Jesus mighty name there's a scripture that I want you to hold on to there's a specific scripture that I want you to hold on to as you send that apart from the jubilee to break yourself out of that prison Psalms 107 verse 16 Psalms 107 Psalms 107 for he breaks or shatters the gates of bronze and cuts the bars of irons asunder. For he breaks the gates of bronze or brass, the gate, that spiritual gate of brass, and cut asunder the iron bars into two. By your obedience, every spiritual prison gate, and you know that prison gates are made with iron, not only is it going to break down and shatter the prison, prison gate, but every iron bar that has made sure that you don't come out of that prison, you don't come out, he shatters it, ascender, so that you, your soul will escape as a bird. And remember, a lot of people are escaping. But the fact that you are an ex-convict doesn't mean that when you come out, you will succeed. If you will understand this world, people who are ex convict when they are released, they find it very difficult to enter and to adjust to the new society. Because of they have felony on their records, the society don't want to give them a chance. So somebody comes out of prison and guess what happens? They can't get a job. They apply for a job. Once they see felony, they will not hire you. Once they see felony, they will not hire you. So it is not just coming out of prison, but God must give you the jubilee a restoration, the jubilee blessing. Oh God, you are faithful. I never connected this until now. Why did God deliver you yesterday and today and say Sunday, tomorrow, we must do jubilee? Because a prisoner an ex convict can come out of prison, but that doesn't mean they are going to succeed on earth, on their everyday life, because it, life will become difficult. Already you have spent so much time in prison. You have missed in many opportunities. You, a prisoner who is just coming up probably doesn't even know how to use the iPhone. 
because they have been in prison for the last 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. So now you present them with an iPhone if they may not even know the newest things going on. The Lord must give you a jubilee. Triple restoration. Tomorrow you shall see it. But right now you are telling God that by your $50 sacrifice, you are standing in Psalms 107, verse 16. For he breaks and shatter the gate of brass and cut the bars of iron ascender. And then tomorrow, we will look at the Jubilee scriptures and we'll pray. Write down five things you are believing God for as he restores you, as you, come, you are out of prison. And that is what will move you to overtake and possess your possession. Today, you are released. You are free in the name of Jesus. Take the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory. For you said we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Your word says that so shall be your word that goeth forth out of, out of your mouth. It shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which it was sent forth. Lord Jesus, your word has gone forth today. Perform miracles. Perform wonders. Bring inmates, those who are bound, tied up in spiritual imprisonment, body, soul, and spirit out of the prison. And give them their jubilee experience in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let every gate of brass and bronze be broken down, be shattered into pieces. And let every iron doors, iron bars that is hindering them from breaking through be cut asunder. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power in the blood, restore, restore, restore their destinies. Let their soul escape as a bird out of the snares of their enemies. Let the snare be broken. And let them be redeemed. Thank you that by the blood our sins are forgiven. By the blood the iniquities of our parents, grandparents, our ancestors, our predecessors are also forgiven. Let the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of Cain, the blood of Abel, speak better things. Let the blood speak prosperity on their lives. Let the blood speak healing on their lives. Let the blood speak restoration in their lives. Let the blood speak deliverance in their lives. Let the blood speak blessings and prosperity and riches into their lives. Lord, perform your word in their lives. As your servants have declared your word, confirm your word, perform your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Let many come back with testimonies of how after this service, their destinies have been opened up to their blessings and breakthroughs. Thank you that you are shifting us from curses into blessings. Thank you that the souls of many are delivered from the powers of darkness. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow is Sunday. Read Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Write down your five jubilee blessings. Five things you are believing God for. Something you want God to do for you that you are not going to enter into next year with this issues, but you are believing God that God will start a process of bringing that jubilee blessings into your life. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. God performs wonders. We are going to be if you don't have your olive oil, bring it tomorrow. For all the jubilee blessing, we will be anointing ourselves. Come on with your olive oil. After that, you will put your prayers in the oil. It will speak for you. It will speak for you. In the name of Jesus. We are meeting, we meet every day. 11 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. 4 a.m. London Time. 5 a.m. Those of you in Europe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fresh Fire Prayer Line. Fresh Fire Prayer Line. Click on the bell to be notified. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, KL Blessing. Click on the bell, you'll be notified and follow us on 
on um, how do you call it YouTube, uh, Facebook, KL Blessing. Go to our website www.freshfireprayer.com. www.freshfireprayer.com. Raise your sacrificial seed. Obey, obey. Oh, but I don't have a job. Whatever you must do, do it, because this jubilee must change your life. Sometimes you have to do something to get something. The woman who was left with only her flour to eat and die with her son, Elijah says, bake me a cake. The, man, the woman is about to bake herself and her son bread to eat and die. Elijah didn't say, bake me bread. He says, cake. Cake is much more difficult to bake and more expensive. Bake me a cake. When I've eaten, take care of yourself. The woman ob obeyed. And there was an abundance. You don't have to keep on being in prison. Do it. However you do it, do it. Do this prophetic thing. Do it. And see whether you end and enter next year with these issues. How God, in his might and his power, will bring you out of every stronghold of imprisonment that has kept you bound. It saddens me when people are in the U, they can't get a job. I don't understand. Unemployment, I don't understand. Beautiful, you can't marry. I don't understand. Delay and stagnation, I don't understand. Behind, you must break this evil cycle. The, the prison gate must open. That's why I'm giving you the scripture. And come on tomorrow ready. In the name of you, do it. Do it. Even if you have to borrow, please. Borrow, you give me $50 after that. I'll, when God begins to give you thousands, you give the person the $50. Sometimes you have to do something to get something. Do something to get something. You know exactly what you need. Do it. Do it. I've never done this before. I've never. Have I told you to give? No, no. I tell you to give. But today, there's a jubilee. I didn't understand it. Yesterday, prison. Today, prison. But God says, you can come out of prison. I'm free. It doesn't mean that you are going to succeed in life. It doesn't mean that because a prisoner can come out. And yesterday, the prisoner will be by the street begging before they can eat. The demons have left you all right. But that doesn't mean that they are going to make you the prosperous person. God must now infuse you with a jubilee blessing. Which tomorrow, we are going to anoint ourselves. That after this prison, how look at how God did it. When the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, for, them, for him to give them the jubilee blessing, he now had to let the Egyptians give them their jewelries and their gold in order to restore them for all the 400, 450, 30 years that they were in captivity. You can't come out of prison empty and think that you can get ahead because all this time that you are in prison, your fellow colleagues, schoolmates, family members, are, were moving ahead of you. So they may be many years ahead of you. It will only take the jubilee. Grace. Tap into this jubilee grace and see God help you to get that job. Restore that marriage. Deliver you from that divorce and separation. Deliver your son from that autistic attack. Deliver you from whatever chains has been keeping you down. Do it. Do it. Do it. He didn't say 500. He didn't say 1,000. He didn't say 100. He said just 50. Represented Jubilee. Jubilee. Lord. And tomorrow, write down five things. Five things that you are trusting God for. We will pray the Jubilee blessing. You will put your own five prayer requests in the oil. And you shall see the goodness of the Lord. So shall be the word that goeth out of the mouth. Of God, it shall not return unto him void, but accomplish the purpose for which it was sent forth in Jesus' name. For those of you who have the Jubilee, uh, the book, this book, the Jubilee blessing is already in it. If you go to um, chapter chapter 11, if you have the book, Touch Not My Anointed, Touch Not My Anointed, I'm going to be ministering to you from it in chapter 11, the Jubilee blessing. The Jubilee Blessing, if you want to follow it and how to operate in it. Touch not my anointed. You will learn in this book, you will learn dangerous prayers to destroy the plans of witches and wizards, how to anoint yourself and your house, breakthrough and deliverance, anointing, anointing for protection and preservation, anointing that makes you invisible and invisible to your enemies, anointing that breaks the yokes and lifts up burdens, how to walk in the Jubilee Grace. You can get this book on our website, www.freshfireprayer.com. www.freshfireprayer.com. You can get it on Kindle and ebook, and it will be emailed to you. 
J Jubilee, uh, Touch Not My Anointed, go to our website. And you can also, if you are using Cash App, Fresh Fire Prayer, Fresh Fire Prayer, one word. May God richly bless you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Bye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land is green, a new place has been released. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Abundance of favor. It's a new level. It's a new level. There's a new level. Abundance of blessings. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. Somebody wipe your hands. Offer your family, offer your education, offer your finances. Come on. I see the nations come to me. It's where I see the answers from the least. I shine as a house of the hill. My greatness cannot be seen. I see the nations come to me to receive answers, to receive answers from the lips. I am shining. I shine. House on the hill. House on the hill. My greatness. My greatness. Can Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I want to see what the Lord is doing. My reality. Say it's my reality. It's beyond my wildest dreams. What the Lord is doing. There's a new flow. Abundance of faith. It's a new level. It's a new level. It's a new level. There's a new flow. Abundance of blessing. Abundance of faith. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. There's a new flow. Abundance of faith. Abundance of faith. It's a new level. It's a new level. It's a new level. There's a new level. Abundance of faith. Abundance of faith. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. Walking in the abundance, moving in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. Walking in abundance, moving in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. I 